I'm Zach Booth, and I am so confident in what I teach my students that I've flown from Utah to Florida so I don't have my normal connections. I'm going to take a thousand dollars and turn it into forty thousand dollars in forty days doing exactly what I teach my students. I'm going to have a film crew follow me around and I'm going to show you guys and give you an over the shoulder look at exactly what it takes to get started from scratch in real estate investing with just a thousand dollars and make a ton of money in just a short amount of time. I hope you guys enjoy this journey and follow along. What's up everybody? Um, feeling super grateful. Today is 24 of the 40 grand and 40 day challenge and uh, it's gonna be a big day. It's Friday here so we've got two really good appointments. One appointment was um, with Jacqueline. I've already met with her before. I'm I'm very confident we'll, we'll be getting the contract today. And then we got another appointment this afternoon that may not be, may not be that great, honestly. Uh, you know, I went through this, the script of, you know, you could possibly make more fixing it up and listing it with an agent. I may not be your best option. And she, she and her husband want to meet with me at the property and, and just see what it, possibly what I could offer. I think that's the big thing. Pretty excited. We're um, we're doing good. We're making progress. And I don't know if you recognize the shirt. I only have like six or seven shirts that I brought with me. You're probably like, oh, he's got a new shirt. And, you know, I've seen that shirt. But this is I've decided this is my closing shirt. This is the lucky shirt. So uh, hopefully it helps me out today. Um, but anyways, I'm excited. Hope you guys are enjoying the content. Make sure you hit the like button. Give me a like, please. It helps with the algorithms. I'm not asking for anything else. And then also leave me a comment if you want to be entered to win um, access to my mastery program free of charge, which is my step-by-step -step tutorials on how to do what I'm doing, as well as access to me as a coach and your mentor. So, so my favorite comment will be entered to win. So make sure you leave me a comment, and uh, it's going to be a big day. Hope you enjoy following along. Um, so when I spoke to you last, what was it, Wednesday? Um, you said, does the inspection happen? Are we closing? I said, yes, because that's what I was told. So we still, there's basically there's mold in the house. We had the inspection report come back and there's mold in the house. Um, so Fred said that he would call you directly, but I'm like, I've been working with this back to so call him. So anyways, um, he still wants the property, but he just can't do it at the purchase price that we have it at. And I was like, well, he's not, he's probably not going to go for it because, you know, we're trying to get him a, at the deal that we have it at. And so I don't know if you're going to have to talk to the seller and you're going to have to tell them like, Hey, look, there's mold in the house and you know, no buyer is going to want to pay this price if there's mold in there. So how much are you wanting to come down? He said, wait, let me go back to my paper. He, he said 172. He's obviously going to have to replace everything that the mold is on. Uh, email me the mold. Uh, email me the report. I'll have to talk to the sellers. Okay. All right. Um, could you just read me off your email really quick so I don't have to search in my email? Um, yeah, it's zach.booth at gmail.com. Okay. okay. All right. Again, he was going to call you directly, but I was like, well, I've been dealing with him, so I would rather just call. So anyways, all right. Well, I'm going to have the inspection report uh, sent over to you now so that you can present that to the seller so that they have proof that like, hey, this is what's going on. So I'll send it now. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. By the way, I'm not very happy that you had your inspection on Wednesday. I got confirmation that yes, we're closing. And then now you're saying you're not wanting to close and wanting to change the price. Just, I know. Ju just keep in mind that this kind of thing keeps people from uh, buying deals from us further. I know. Well, listen, like I understand your aspect on your side. I totally get it. And, but the only, I mean, Obviously, I work well, for it's the buyer, it's so Friday. I have to kind of it's Friday, and Wednesday was the inspection. Wednesday, I got the official, yes, we're closing. It's Friday. 
It's Friday. Right. Well, I found out yesterday evening that yeah. there was no need for me to, like, send out, like, hey, listen, inspection didn't pass. Because I needed to find out final word from Fred. Like, hey, what are, what are we going to try to do to, you know, still try to move forward? So I just got the call from him now. And no, I, I just I just feel like you guys here keep dicking around and, and pushing me and pushing me and pushing me. Um, I, I, you know, the, the problem is, is you give me, you say you're going to do something and then you change your mind after you've committed, right? Like I just, when I, when I have these deals, there's a time frame. The sellers are in a position that they need to have this done quickly. And, and so, you know, I can't have relationship with, with end buyers when this is the process that they put us through because I have multiple other deals I'm dealing with, it, it, it keeps me from focusing on finding more deals for you guys. Like this, I'm not happy about this. Uh, like, Hey, listen, I'm, I understand like your frustration. I totally get it. But at the same time, like we can't purchase a property, you know, at this price when like, it's not worth it when there's like mold in the house. I understand. Like I gave you the go ahead Wednesday. I'm only, I'm only passing along the info that I have. Yeah. So I said, hey, Wednesday, you know, what's the update on Stefner? I need to I need to at least ease the mind of him. Like, what's the deal? Well, no, he no, no. Said, See, that's the problem. Take... That's the problem is you give me an answer I want to hear, not the answer that you actually have. So Wednesday, what no. I should have been told is, hey, we're still waiting on a mold report. I will know more on Friday. The, the problem is when, when you say you're going to do something and, hey, we're done here, then you move on to something else. The problem is when you go back on things that you say, right? I'm perfectly okay hearing the reality of things, but not being told something that's not 100% true or given information that you don't completely have just so you don't miss out on a deal, just so I don't keep shopping the deal. Because, you know, that leaves me um, hoping on something or expecting something that doesn't happen because you guys are concerned you're not going to get the deal. But the problem is, in my, my uh, opinion, it's just an opinion, I think that's low integrity, I think it's dishonest, I think it's, it's not being truthful, um, and, and I, I can't do business with people that have that type of approach when working with the inspection processes and time frames and everything else on these deals. That's why I'm upset. I understand you can't buy a property if it doesn't make sense with your bottom line. That's fine, I get that, but, but throughout the process there needs to be open um, open conversation and, and honesty. That's why I'm frustrated. I mean, it's, I, I, it's fine. I'll, I'll go back to the sellers. It is what it is at this point, but um, I'm not very happy on how everything happened here. So again, I'm sorry. Um, I, I can only relay like the information that I have. Um, you know, when you text me and said, did, an, did inspection happen? Are we closing? I said yes. Inspection happened. Um, yes, we're closing because yeah. that's the information. That's the information that I was given. Gotcha. So, well, you need to talk. Um, you need again, to talk I'm to the sorry. higher ups or whoever give you your information and make sure you have proper information because you're in between clients and the money. And if if gotcha. information is passed incorrectly, you know you're going to have a hell of a time doing further deals because you're going to be burning bridges and, and may not be your fault, but you know, you're representing a company as the acquisition manager and you know, unless they get their shit together, it's going to, it's going to look bad for you and you're going to struggle to do more deals with, with wholesalers and other investors. Understood. So, all right, well, send me the report. I'll do what I can. It's probably not going to happen though. Okay. I'll not, send it because, because they were told they were closing, like they're going to be pissed. I mean, now I have to pass on the same bullshit that I just heard, and it's, it sucks. It sucks for everybody, because now nobody's getting the deal. I'll send it over now. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it wasn't too harsh. Um, but, you know, in this business, um, you don't say you can do something if you can't do something. You say, I don't know. I'll have to look into it. And it's just really frustrating that we're there. I mean, I have their earnest money. I have their $5,000 earnest money. I'm still getting paid. But the problem, the frustration is now I have to go back to those sellers and, and say, hey, guys, like, um, 
here's a mold report. It took a while for it to come in. This is the last thing we were waiting on. Um, we can't close on. You know, I know you're not coming down on price. I'm not even going to ask for it. But this is what you're dealing with. You've got mold in the house. Here it is. If you want to work with me further, we can do it. If not, I can send you the cancel cancellation. But it is what it is. And I'm sure they'll yell and scream and throw temper tantrums and I'll send them the report and um, walk away from the deal at this point. So it's just, it's just frustrating. Um, it's frustrating to say the least. So it is what it is. We'll see, we'll see what happens. I'll probably go to their house and take them the report and talk to them in person. So um, I think it'd be a more respectable thing to do and like, put myself out there and let them take out their frustrations on me and um, which they should be frustrated right I mean it sucks when you think you're gonna get a certain amount of money for your property and I'm gonna have to come down a whole bunch of money to make it a, a possibility so oh, it's not always rainbows and butterflies guys and the funny thing is those smaller deals the four to five thousand dollar deals and some people are like oh it's not a small amount of money it's actually for what we do it's a small amount of money my average deal is like twenty five thousand dollars and so, you know, this kind of thing, it's like, oh, okay, the mold report came back. I'm actually only going to make $10,000. You know, things happen. That's why we shoot for a bigger profit margin. So when we, when we talk to the sellers, I guess we can give you this. We want to make sure we're very confident we can do that. I put it under contract at a much higher price than I wanted to, but they weren't willing to come down. They, that's, what, that's what they wanted. They wouldn't come down. And so I'm trying to give them the world, but the way things are, it's just not going to happen. You know, and, and the thing is too, is some people might watch this and think, oh, well, you, you know, you're trying to take advantage of these sellers by offering them, you know, such a little amount. But the thing is, is I'm tied into a network of all of the investors. And so every single investor gets to see this property. So if they listed this property on the MLS, as is, uh, they're going to have the same buyer seeing it. Um, and on top of that, they're going to have 30-day inspection or contracts. They're going to have um, inspection reports, and, and they're going to end up with the same amount, uh, the same type of offers, but even less um, because they've got to pay the agents and time on the market and holding costs and all those things. So they may squeeze a little more money. They may actually not squeeze as much money listing on, on the MLS. Um, it, it's, just, it's just frustrating. I'm just really, really frustrated. Um, because they're going to think that I'm, that they'll most likely think that I'm just trying to squeeze money out of them and get them down. But it is, you know, that's the, the best offer I've gotten, um, still is the best offer I've gotten, even though they want to come down. What is that? Uh, it's $13,000, um, from where I, where I currently had them at. So, oh, shit. I'm upset because I don't want to go have that conversation. You know, in this business, you got to have uncomfortable conversations. I don't like having conversations like I just had with her, too. Cynthia's a nice gal. She's a super hard worker. She's working nights. She's working um, during the day. She has kids. And, um, you know, I'm sure she's upset and frustrated and sad and, you know, that I talked to her the way I did. And, um, but it's when there's this much money on the line, it's, it's kind of a... Uh, it can get an emotional, it can get a little emotional. So <sighs> to say the least, I uh, say this, I will not work with that company again. That company will be blacklisted from my purchase list because they have been the biggest pain in the ass. They've not been willing to close at my title company, um, which, okay, whatever. They beat me up on price more than one time. This isn't the first time. They make an offer and change their offer, and then, then they don't want to, you know, they make an offer, but then they want a full inspection report, and then they, like, they just, they drug this out way longer. Most of my cash buyers come in. They take a look at it once. They make me a full price cash offer as is. That's it. They put the non-refundable earnest money, and they close two to three days later. Um, that's what I want to work with. That's how I want to deal with my cash buyers. So uh, the way that they want things done is just, it's not going to happen. I'm not working with them again. All right, so thank you. So I'm looking in the Brenda area. Brenda, Varico, Bloomingdale, Cessna. Okay. 
Well, I have a Safner deal that just um, just recently. Uh, it's 404. Well, let's talk about it. It's 404 King Louis Court. Um, How much is it? Um, I'm asking 193. That's the price I'm looking for. So, on the email, can you um, give me more details so I can go in drive by? Uh, it's actually got a lockbox on it. Why don't we just go meet there? Do you have time today? Yes, I would really like it. What about three? Three o'clock. Uh, I need to find you today at three. Yep, I'll text. I'll text you as soon as we get off the phone here. Okay, thank you so much. I'll see you today. All right, see ya. Thank you. You can't make this shit up. Seriously, if I was watching what you guys are watching right now, like me throwing this big temper tantrum, buyer falling apart, and then I'm cold calling to find sellers, and it's like, and she's like, no, I'm not selling, but I want to buy something. And I'm like, uh, yeah, I'm sure you do, yada, yada, you know, I'm feeling sorry for myself. And then I bring up 404, because she said Sefner, I want a deal in Sefner. That deal's in Sefner. It's vacant, it's ready to go. I still have time on the contract. I still have time on the contract. So I'm going to go show it to her. Dude, if this works out, I'm going to be absolutely blown away. So we'll see her today at that time. I'm going to text her right now. So we are, we're out of the house. It's crazy. It is Friday and I just realized this. I haven't seen the sun in five days. I'd go out in the morning and go for a walk to the gym, work out and walk back to the house. And I would cold call from 8.30, 9 o'clock in the morning till 8 o'clock at night. And then I would stop every once in a while to do a follow-up call or to deal with the title company or something. But I have been stuck in the house the whole week trying to set up appointments and I've done that so we got a super good appointment um, we got we got three things to go do today we're gonna go uh, hopefully get Jacqueline's property under contract that's a big deal and then we're gonna hopefully hopefully get another contract we got an appointment third we've got to go to the uh, house in on King Louis Drive that's the property that uh, we may have just found a buyer cold calling this morning which was a huge huge win uh, just got off the call with Sergey he's gonna buy that trailer. Heck yes. So um, he's actually just gonna pay $7,000 assignment fee. So I'm gonna assign it for 7,000. But what I need to do is I need to go back to the seller and say, hey, we can close, but we need to get this, this lien thing figured out. And we also have to get the um, tenants out. Let's get to work. I'm excited. Oh. oh. The appointment, the appointment was okay. It was kind of frustrating because the uh, the gentleman here with us, he was Tom. He was all over the place. Like I couldn't get him to hold still and talk to me. She would talk to me, and she was really sweet, but she's she's really reserved. Um, normally, I like to like stay and talk and get to know people, but like I would ask questions, and they'd give one word answers. Like they were, I I could not get them to to warm up to me. Um, it just it was it was getting a little awkward. So I think they were just curious what the offer would be. Um, and so I made it very clear, listen, you got options. You know, I may not be your only option. I gave them a range. They're going to think about it over the weekend. They got the Super Bowl. And then they said midweek next week, I should get back to them and talk to them. So I'll, I'll, I'll blow up their phones midweeks next week. I really hope to get this contract because it's completely vacant and I could, I could potentially get a buyer for it pretty fast. So there's motivation there. It's just, it, I don't know how long, I don't know how long it's gonna end up becoming. So, so we, uh, she's a good connection cause she buys rentals. It's just, you know, she pointed out something that I hadn't seen when I first walked through it and it makes sense. So the back patio has a giant tree next to it and it's lifting up that cement and it's sending all the water up against the house and there's, mold up the wall on the outside um, and, it, and it's probably on the inside of the wall there is what that potential mold is so she said 160 is the highest she would go um, I have two offers one it's 170 one at 172 so 
I'm going to go home and call the sellers and just say, hey, listen, you know, this is the issue. This is where this is something I didn't even think about or look at. Um, it's just there's no way because to get that tree out and take out that cement and tear out that, that sheetrock and fix the wall, like that's what we're up against to be able to turn it into a rental. So um, I'm out. I'm out. So you guys can list it with an agent. Best of luck. But I, I can't. I can't pay as much as what we have it under contract for because of that. So it is what it is. Um, uh, it kind of sucks. I'm actually going to get the. Uh, I'm actually going to get the lockbox because I'm done here. So uh, this deal sucks. It is what it is. Uh, so they're going to be the. Uh, it was a young lady there, and she said my mom's not here, and uh, told her to call her and confirm that I can come back. So I'm going to come back tonight at 6 o'clock. I'm going to go back over and try and get the purchase agreement put in place. Um, just be like, Jackie, like we're going to do it. Let's do it. <sighs> it's a lot of work. Let's go do it. Well, um, today, was, today was hard. It was really hard. It's Friday. Um, I was really hoping to get that contract with Jackie. Uh, she really wants me to see it first. I tried to get into the house twice. First time, tenant wasn't home, just the daughter. So I came back at six. She asked me to come back tomorrow. I should have got the phone number of the mom the first time I went. That was stupid. And then I got to call her. So I showed up, got the phone number the second time. I'm going back tomorrow at two when she said, Hopefully they don't just dodge town tomorrow and be like, oh yeah, well something came up, which is what I fully expect to have happen. But I'm trying to get that contract. I've got another really good appointment with a guy named Luis tomorrow at four o'clock. So tomorrow's gonna be good, but I'm happy. I'm really excited to spend time with some students that are coming out. I got, I got a bunch of students coming out. I got keep coming tomorrow. Good stuff. End of day 23 or 24, 24. Yeah, it all kind of blurs together. You work this much and this many hours and so many days in a row, it's just like, you get scrambled and you just, it's kind of crazy. Last time I worked like this, like no days off, no breaks, did it for two years straight down in Sao Paulo, Brazil, serving a Christian mission. And uh, it was an amazing experience, but man, I haven't been this mentally and emotionally drained since that experience feels just like the mission. It's like I'm, it's like I can't wait till this is over because I can just have some moments of like emotional peace. I'm not worried about the next deal, the next thing, because I got this time frame and I'm trying to do all this good in such a short, compact amount of time. It's just emotionally draining. It really, really is because I want to show you guys as much as I can and show you what's really possible in this business. So I'm, I'm really putting it all out there for you guys. Um, and, and so is Jonathan behind the camera. He's just been absolutely amazing. Um, and been so helpful and pushing through so much. So anyway, so I'm gonna go to bed early again tonight and be rested up for the weekend because it's the weekend we're gonna party. We'll be on the dialer appointments. It's gonna be so much fun. See you guys later. Appreciate you. See you t tomorrow, day 25.